Good morning to all of you. On behalf of the University Grants Commission, I cordially welcome all of you to this important uh, national workshop. This workshop is being conducted directly by the UGC. Conventionally, UGC used to sponsor seminars, workshops, but here we are conducting it directly on autonomy to colleges, benefits and way forward in this August campus, Maulana Jad National Urdu University, Hyderabad, one of the unique universities of the country. I request honorable guests to come on to Dias. I request uh, uh, Professor Mohammad Parvej Aslam Saab, Vice Chancellor of this university, Professor uh, Gopal Redgaru, member UGC New Delhi, Professor Papi Redgaru, Chairman Telangana State Council for Higher Education, Professor Baskar, Vice Chancellor MS University, Tirunal Valley, Professor Rajendran, Vice Chancellor Algappa University, uh, Karaikudi and uh, other dignitaries and to <laughs> Professor uh, Ramachandram Saab, Vice Chancellor, Osmania <laughs> University <laughs> uh, is here. I request our uh, uh, volunteers to felicitate uh, Professor uh, Mohammad Parvej Aslam Saab, host of this uh, program. I request uh, Professor Parvej Aslam Saab to felicitate Professor Gopal Redgaru, member UGC. No, no. <laughs> I request uh, Professor Gopal Redgaru to uh, felicitate uh, Professor uh, Papi Redgaru, Chairman State Council for Higher Education. I also request uh, uh, Professor Gopal Redgaru to facilitate Professor Baskar, Vice Chancellor, uh, MS University, Tirunal Valley. Uh, I request uh, Professor Parvej Aslam sir to facilitate Professor Ramachandram Garu, Vice Chancellor, Usmania University, Hyderabad. This side. I request uh, Professor Parvej Aslam sir to also facilitate uh, Professor Rajendran sir. Professor is the Vice Chancellor of Alagappa University, Karaikudi, Tamil Nadu. Uh, I request to Dr. Madhukar, uh, Partner Advisor NAC, uh, to come on to DAS and also request Professor Gopal Redigaru to uh, felicitate him. I request Professor Gopal Redigaru to uh, felicitate <laughs> <That's my opinion. laughs> I request uh, Professor uh, Gopal Vedigari to facilitate uh, I request the guests to light the lamp before we formally inaugurate this workshop. So, once again, we cordially welcome you for this important uh, national workshop. I briefly uh, introduce you the purpose of this workshop before we hear to the honorable guests on the dais. Uh, as you are all aware, 
that uh, autonomy and accountability are the two principles of higher education in this country. While our universities are autonomous by nature, we have adopted affiliating structure for the colleges. For the past three decades, UGC has been promoting the concept of autonomous colleges. There are merits and demerits in affiliating system, but uh, autonomy has its own advantages. Uh, in this country, we have about 900 universities as on date. This includes central universities, state universities, deemed universities, private universities, institute of national importance like that. And whereas we have about 700 autonomous colleges only. So the number of autonomous colleges as on date is less than the number of universities in the country. So this triggered the government of India and UGC and particularly Professor Gopal Redgar took strong initiative for this. I will tell you later uh, what he did. That uh, they are keen to promote the number of autonomous colleges in the country. For example, Tamil Nadu has the highest number of autonomous colleges in the country. So the other objective of this workshop is to bring all A-grade institutions, if they are interested, to bring into the fold of autonomous <coughs> colleges. They will be awarded autonomy if they are interested. This workshop will explain you how you can go for autonomy, what are the advantages and uh, other benefits you can uh, get from that. We had with us Professor Madhukar also, who will explain how accreditation issues can be tackled, how you can go for accreditation by NAC in this uh, regard. So we also, in the participants, we have principals and the coordinators, largely the principals, coming from different states of the country, particularly from Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, and Puducherry. Some of the experienced autonomous colleges in the afternoon session will share us their best practices with us. They will be documented by the UGC. And uh, these new, uh, they can also mentor as well as guide the colleges which are keen to go for autonomy in future. So this workshop has a mix of participants, both coming from the existing autonomous colleges who are very well experienced, and those who are keen to go for autonomy. It is a mix of both. The existing autonomous colleges have few issues which need to be resolved. We are keen to note them and take it up. And uh, the colleges which are willing to go for autonomy also have some hesitations. We have with us State Council for Higher Education Chairman, Vice Chairman, Vice Chancellors of three, four prominent universities here. Member of the UGC who is instrumental in conducting this workshop is also here. They are all here to guide you. We are all keen to listen to you, sir, in this workshop. I uh, once again thank on behalf of UGC for all of you for having come here. And uh, we are trying to make this workshop uh, a very interactive rather than the uh, just uh, monologue. It should be a dialogue process than the monologue. Particularly all the afternoon sessions are planned in such a way it will be more of a dialogue process, interactive process than the monologue because all of you are very experienced in your own area. Most of them are principals from accredited institutions, autonomous <coughs> colleges and very potential institutions which can go for autonomy. Uh, with these things, I once again invite you for this workshop. Now I request the Honorable Vice Chancellor of uh, Manu, uh, Dr. Mohammed Aslam Parvez Saab, who has uh, readily consented to provide all the facilities for conducting this workshop. I have not met him. I have not telephoned him. We just sent an email to his office, and through his PRO, instantly Dr. Mohammed Aslam Parvez Saab responded and when I requested him to also come to this program and uh, inaugurate the program, so he instantly, within five minutes, we got a mail, yes, I will be available for the program. Thank you for your curiosity and concern for the program, sir. And so once again, we are thankful to uh, Dr. Mohammed Aslam Parvez Saab. As a host to this program, and head of this uh, host institution, I request Professor Muhammad Aslam Parvez Saab to welcome the gathering and Thank guests of honor. Thank, Thank you, sir. Uh, respectable dignitaries on the dais, of the dais, participants, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning.
from Maulana Azad National Urdu University. Uh, I am its first servant. Uh, my subject stream was botany. So whatever greenery you see, partly because of my subject interest. And uh, I was really, uh, I would use the word thrilled when I heard that uh, this university has been chosen as a venue for this important meeting. Because I could imagine the dignitaries we will be inviting and getting an opportunity to interact from this southern region. So that's why I immediately said yes to Dr. Srinivas and ensured that I am present on this meeting. Last night, late, I returned, cutting short my program because I wanted to attend this program and welcome you all to this university. Now, this university, as the name suggests, is an Urdu medium university. It was established, it is a brainchild of late Atal Bihari ji, who simultaneously established Hindi University as Varda and Urdu University at Hyderabad. The mandate of this university is to educate people through the Urdu medium, right from a school to, I would say, PhD. So we have a schools, three schools we have, one in the Hyderabad city, one in Darbanga, and another in the new Haryana, Mewat region. We have polytechnics, we have ITIs, we have UG courses, we have PG courses, doctoral programs. Right across the streams of humanities, commerce and sciences, technology included, we have BTEC courses in computers, we have MCA programs. Now, all these subjects are taught through Urdu medium. And as you can imagine, it's a big challenge. But what we do, we do not translate the terminology. We retain the terminology, teach it through Urdu medium, and then motivate the students to join English communication classes so that when they, are, when they graduate from this university, they know the English, and once they know it, they can replace it with, the Urdu can be replaced with English. As is obvious, this university is in fact, I would say, a lateral entry point for graduates of mother's education system. Because that was the theme and the purpose. That the graduates of the madarsa, if they wish to join the mainstream, there should be an opportunity where they can join in. So this university that way is acting as a bridge to link madrasa educated people, madrasa graduates to join the mainstreams. So most of our students, they come from the madrasas. They come with the Urdu background. They are taught the contemporary subjects. They learn the English, the Hindi and other languages. And when they pass out, I am happy to share, they have a good number of employment opportunities. And the placement is fairly good of this university. We have a directorate of translation and publication which is regularly engaging people to write the material in Urdu language so that it is made available. This is a dual mode university. We have on-campus programs and we have off-campus through distance education. And it has presence across the country. We have different colleges and centers spread over the country. So that is the brief introduction about the university where I welcome you. Now, I come from Delhi, and before coming here, I was principal at Zykros and Delhi College of Delhi University. I'm a product of Delhi University, I've been a part of it. So there, also at, at that time, we heard about the autonomy. And uh, I, as a student and as an administrator of education, feel that when we talk of benefits, and moving forward, to me, the most important thing is the quality of education, curriculum-wise as well as value-wise. Because the later part, what I found as a teacher interacting with the students is grossly missing. Because value education systems are almost disappearing from schools also, what to talk of the colleges. It must be an integral part. 
So I understand that most of you are coming from colleges and universities as well. And when we have the autonomy and we have the responsibility, it has great advantages because we, keeping in mind the local needs and the requirements, we can modify our curricula, our syllabus, our subjects, the options which you offer to the students. But at the same time, I feel that we have a freedom to incorporate those components of our curricula which normally we do not get the opportunity being in the a rigid framework of the university or the institution where we are attached. So this is a great, I see it a great opportunity as well as a challenge where I would say that we should have a larger vision insight where we plan to develop our students not only as a good educated person but as a great human being who take care of the humanity because human values as we all witness are disappearing very fast from our institutions from our society and i believe that we as teachers have great responsibility to inculcate these values back into our system back to our young generation so that I believe that was and that is, is still the greatest strength of this country. And if we could, we are able to inculcate those things in our students with greater autonomy and greater opportunity to devise our curriculum as per the local needs, we will have a great opportunity to build up a vibrant and sustainable India. <laughs> I thank you all for sparing your time and joining us. And I'm looking forward to have wonderful interactions and coming out with good learning. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. Dr. Mohammed Aslam Parve, sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor of this host institution, university, for his uh, important uh, words that ac autonomy, accountability, and moral values are integral to our higher education system. Now I request Professor Gopal Redigaru, Honorable Member of the University Grants Commission, New Delhi. In fact, it was his idea to conduct this workshop. Under his leadership and guidance in the last four months, we have conducted three workshops. One is on National Academic Depository, where the certificates of the students will be on digital format. Another is accreditation of unaccredited institutions, reaching out to those institutions and one more on Swayam MOOCs that was conducted in this very campus, August campus, and in this very auditorium. Sir. Now I request Professor Gopal Redigaru, uh, who has taken up this issue to enhance the number of autonomous colleges in the country with the government of India as well as with UGC. We, will, we are keen to hear from you, sir, your further plans and guidance to us, how we can achieve the objectives of this workshop through your leadership and ideas. Professor Aslam Parvez Ji, Vice Chancellor Manu, Professor Papi Redigaru, Chairman, State Council of Higher Education, Telangana, Professor S. Ramchandranagaru, Vice Chancellor, Usmani University, <coughs> Professor <coughs> Venkatramanagaru, my friend, Vice Chairman, State Council of Higher Education, Telangana, Professor K. Bhaskar Ji, Vice Chancellor, MS University, Thirunal Valley, Professor N. Rajendran, Vice Chancellor, Alagappa University, Karaikudi, Professor <coughs> Uh, Kavita Dariani, Vice Chancellor of Jawaharlal Nehru Fine Arts University, and my friend and advisor to the NAC, Dr. Madhukar. My dear friends, faculty members, principals, media, I extend a wholehearted welcome on behalf of myself and on behalf of the University Grants Commission, which is <coughs> organizing this particular program. I congratulate uh, Dr. Srinivas Karu because being a joint secretary, his duty was another thing, but he's very active in recent days, in the last three, four months, we have organized several programs under his leadership. University Grants Commission is, intends to uh, be proactive and make the stakeholders also active in this particular program. So I am happy uh, Mamad Aslam Parvez Ji has given us an opportunity to hold the program. Congratulations, sir, for making the campus a green one and eco-friendly one and making environment friendly campus. Really, I'm happy being a botanist and you are maintaining the campus. 
In recent days, I have seen another important campus, uh, which is in Bangalore, National Assessment Accreditation Council, which was headed by another body professor, that is Professor D.P. Singh Ji. If you see that uh, campus, I think uh, we never forget the dream memories of that uh, greenery. He was a botany professor and he told me when I went, I am a botanist. That is the reason I am maintaining the entire campus in a greenery and various multiple type of uh, plants were there. Different types of uh, flowers and all other things you see. You, it, it is only a small campus but it will take so much of time to uh, complete the entire campus moving from one place to another place. So I congratulate um, Parveji and also all of you for taking <coughs> active part in this particular program. My dear friends, <coughs> though this program is organized by us and uh, uh, we wanted actual what is the feedback you want from your side. My dear friends, the autonomy was the one of the main things which the higher education of this country is trying to implement in this country. All the universities are autonomous universities, but the colleges, they wanted to extend the autonomy. Starting from, this is meant for strengthening the universities, strengthening the colleges, and also for innovation and research in the even colleges also. Starting from Sarvepalli Radha Krishnan Commission in the year 1949, the issue of autonomy was going on, and same was restated by the <coughs> Kotari Commission. Ultimately, uh, in the year 1986, under the new education policy, the concept of autonomous college has been familiarized and had been <coughs> legalized and legitimately the scheme was started. We have completed more than 30 years in the autonomous system and in spite of it, I am sorry, in spite of uh, completing more than 30 years in autonomy, unfortunate thing in the entire country is we have not even reached the strength of we have not even crossed the 700. Till the 31st December, it was uh, 672. In recent meeting held in the month of January, we have approved another 11 colleges, 11 school, 11 colleges. That is, even that also is not completing 700. The Honorable uh, Minister for Higher Education, Prakash Javadekarji and the Secretary MHRD also insisting that <coughs> In the, um, by the commencement of the next academic year, this should go to at least 1,000. We have more than 46,000 colleges in this country. 30 years have already over. Why we are lagging is an important issue which we have to discuss here. My dear friends, <coughs> autonomy actually was thought of creating an excellent institutions in this country. We thought University Grants Commission thought by the, the Survey Pali Radha Krishnan Ji, Kotari Commission, all the eminent educationists who have discussed on the conferring autonomy to the various colleges, that the autonomy means in, in creating institutions of excellence at college level itself. You might have seen in recent days, the Honorable Prime Minister wanted to establish institutions of eminence at the university levels. We have already granted six institutions in the country. See, three in private sector, three in public sector, another remaining seven in public sector and seven in private sector will be coming very soon. So institutions of eminence, India has a great history. We have established the institutions like Nalanda, Takshashila, Vikramsila, like so many institutions before any country thought of establishing institutions of eminence in the country. And that is the reason we wanted to, we are, we, University Grants Commission wants to focus on Further strengthening the academic colleges, academy and in these autonomous colleges in the country. There are three stakeholders. One is college, the other is the university, the third one is state councils uh, <coughs> representing the various state governments. These three together, these three organizations should come together, then only autonomous colleges scheme will be successful. Otherwise, if anyone is lagging bad, there are problems also. I will mention here and there. I am here till evening, I wanted to know from the, all the participants what is your feed, feedback, what you want actually from the University Grants Commission, what you are expecting, what are the problems you are facing. In spite of the 30 years of uh, um, launching of this particular program, why it is not going forward? Another thing I wanted to share uh, before you, in spite of the vastness of the college, university and nation, we have several, uh, Dr. Sinwas was telling around 900 universities are there in the country. Around 400 universities in public sector, central and state, state universities. 
and 108 universities only uh, have granted the autonomy. All the 600 or 700 autonomous colleges are there, they are only in 107 universities. Remaining universities, there are many universities, that university doesn't have even single autonomous college in that jurisdiction. What is the reason? We don't know, we have to find out it. And, and as Dr. Srinivas was telling that, we, are in, we, we wanted to encourage all the A-grade colleges. We have taken up the data, recently it was discussed in the University Grants Commission meeting also. Whichever college is having the A-grade continuously, three cycles, we wanted to encourage, invite them to be the autonomous colleges. Recently, Hindu college representatives came to me from Guntur. Hindu college is a prestigious college established 80 years back. They haven't gone for the autonomy. I asked them, why you haven't gone for the autonomy? They said, why our management is not interested, sir. I told them, I'll come to Guntur, you organize a meeting, I'll convince your management also. That, that is I wanted to know, because autonomy means academic freedom, all sorts of the freedom we wanted to give, and that is being conferred by the University Grants Commission, and universities also encouraging the autonomous colleges. You will be conducting your own examinations, you will be designing your own design, certain extent, and all sorts of the academic um, the freedom is there to the all the academic co in autonomous colleges and we want to make you an excellent institution in this country. You develop your, we want you to develop the leadership qualities. Use of <coughs> in, in, in computers, conducting examinations, conducting all sorts of the program in autonomous colleges, you have the freedom. And apart from this, if, you, if your college is a university college or government college or aided college, you are getting 20 lakhs per annum. Just imagine. 20 lakhs, 20 lakhs per annum getting an autonomous college for all sorts of the activities, not for the construction of the building, construction salaries that is not there. And we are, getting, we are granting the money and colleges are not coming forward and managements are not coming forward. There are problems also. In recent days we have amended the autonomous uh, Demon University, autonomous uh, colleges regulations also and in normal course the parent university has to forward the application of the autonomous colleges to the University Grants Commission. If they hold the application for more than 30 days, it deemed to be forwarded. And many universities are not coming forward to forward the applications of the, their respective colleges for the autonomous status. That is happening. That is the reason University Grants Commission recently passed regulations. If the university is not willing, now also, year after, you need not come to the University Grants Commission. Online, you apply for the autonomous college status. That will go to automatically state council, that will go to the parent university, that will come to the University Grants Commission. Another stage is, after <coughs> forwarding the application, forwarding or not forwarding after 30 days, university also has to nominate a representative in the autonomous college committee, which, is, which will be uh, constituted by the University Grants Commission. That also is not happening. And I have seen, I have an example in Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu, one university, they haven't forwarded the application form of the college. And we have taken up the issue, then they have sent the representative on the committee. This is happening in the reality. Why it is happening, we don't know. There need not be any confusion. Conflict of interest is not there. We are all part and parcel. College, university, state council and university grants commission, we are together one family. We have the concept of Vasudeva Kutumbakam. We are all one family. We are taking up the higher education. We have to take we have to take the responsibility more and more to take the take further the higher education in a positive direction. Expansion in a quantity and expansion through the without losing the quality. That is the major thing which we have to think. In coming days, uh, University Grants Commission is coming with the several program, innovative programs. Even one program is we are going to launch very soon. We are going to grant one crore to the each college. We are, we are going to select around, around 500 colleges in this country, sir. One crore to each college. And another scheme is 50 lakhs to each college for the research activity. And another scheme we are going to give five crores to each institution. Not to the universities. They are all for institutions only. In all social sciences and arts, we wanted to encourage them. Other schemes are there. Just recent scheme which we have launched. It which, which will be inaugurated very soon. So there is no dearth of money with the University Grants Commission. There are no hurdles in granting the autonomy. There won't be any problem for the universities and managements coming forward for the autonomous status. That's what the University Grants Commission is uh, meant for it. And I have, uh, I have given you the information. And out of the 29 states, only 25 states have the autonomous college in the country. Remaining four 
They are not there and remain on this union territory is also not there in the part of it. So, highest being the Tamil Nadu, highest autonomous colleges are being in Tamil Nadu, that is 184, sir. Yes, I am giving the statistics. Second one is Andhra Pradesh, 99, and Karnataka, 70, Maharashtra, 68, Telangana, 59. Remaining states are there. There are one or two colleges also there. Uttar Pradesh being the biggest state, they have only 11 colleges in the entire state. And Uttarakhand, they have the four, West Bengal, 14, Kerala, 19, Jammu Kashmir, third. This is, these are the statistics. So, South India is the most beneficiary in the autonomous college scheme and also supporter of the University Grants Commission scheme. Really, I congratulate the participants from the entire South India for supporting in a larger way all the four states of, so now we have become the four, five states, that is a different story. But all the four states have come forward to take up the autonomy. I am happy, I congratulate the representatives from all the South Indian states and also Srinivas Garu for taking up this particular program. My dear friends, University Grants Commission is launching several programs. We wanted to liberalize, liberalize all the scheme programs. Even our intention was, University Grants Commission intention was to uh, make the autonomous colleges into a deemed to be universities. If they are the autonomous colleges, if they have the A grade continuously three cycles, they will become the deemed to be universities. If they are coming forward, we are also we want to encourage all of them also. In they are in they are in pipeline, colleges are coming forward. Even deemed university college regulations, earlier they were 80 page regulations, sir. Content is there more or liberalized. We have made it 18 page documents, sir. And we wanted to make further uh, easy to the all the institutions which are coming forward. And autonomous college regulations have been modified. Even ODL scheme, <coughs> open distance learning because of the Supreme Court judgment is there. And many institutions we know, and Papadigar also was discussing it, he will, he will be speaking on it. And many institutions, especially in the private sector, they are misusing the ODL scheme. And that is the reason the Supreme Court has passed serious features. And the University Grants Commission have made it a mandatory that all the institutions cannot run the ODL scheme year after. Only the institutions who have the A grade only can will be allowed by the University Grants Commission. And another important thing is, and the ODL permission will be year after five years. Once, once if you have taken the permission, it will continue for the next five years. Earlier it was every year you have to take the permission. If it is delayed, you are not getting. But year after, you, you, you can seek their permission only for once in five years. And as far as the autonomous colleges are concerned, sir, we are extending the autonomy to ten years. If you have a certain grade in the NAC, A plus, A plus plus, all these colleges will not be inspected by the University Grants Commission. On paper itself, we are granting it. And a college which is an autonomous, if they get A plus plus, that, that college also will be extended autonomy without on-site visit. And we wanted to encourage and we wanted to give whatever infer, whatever support from the University Grants Commission, whether finances or physical support or whatever it is, infrastructure support that we University Grants Commission has met. And the Honorable Prime Minister is trying to address all sections, especially the higher education section, because he always speaks India is a young. More than 60% of the young, boy, young people of this country are in the 25 to 30 age group. So they all should get. University Grants Commission recently started MOOCs program. And autonomous colleges have a role to play in the MOOCs program. Massive online open learning courses. And wherever, when, whenever you want, you can. Anywhere, anytime, anyone can register on the MOOC line to come. MOOC courses to complete your courses. So without taking much of your time, I am happy you all are here. Be here till evening. I am here to listen. Um, morning to evening, I wanted to know from you what actually, what type of the problems you are facing, what are the positive points, what are the negative points, and what you want us to do. Thank you for giving me an opportunity. Thank you one and all.